This is the FTI Air Batch Controller. It's available in AC input to AC output to the solenoids or AC input to DC output solenoid. Two versions of each, the AC and the DC, are available with a US or URA plug on it for 110 or 220 operation. Each batch controller comes with two cables hardwired to the enclosure that will plug into a proximity sensor on your air valve and two cables that have a DIN connector on one end and an M12 connector on the other which will plug into the enclosure and the solenoid. Also available are extension cables for each the proximity sensor and the solenoid. You will also need a few unique air valve components to run the batch controller. The air valve should be fitted, needs to be fitted with a proximity sensor, and that is available as a cap or sensor only, or a complete air valve bottom. For the plastic version, you also need a new carrier, which has a metal pin in the top, which works with the proximity sensor. So that also can be ordered as a cap and carrier or a complete air valve. You also will need a solenoid. This should be sized for the correct air inlet size of your air valve, equal to or larger, and also the correct power supply. So there are three sizes available with three different coil voltages. The 110, 220, or 24 volt DC. Now we will look at installing the components required to run the batch controller. On the bottom of the enclosure there will be a label with pump 1 and pump 2. On the left is pump 1's solenoid connection and the cord that goes to the proximity sensor. To install the cord that goes to the proximity sensor you take the female end and plug it into the male end of your proximity sensor and twist to lock. Next, you install the solenoid cable with the female plug into the male receptacle on the enclosure. Push in and twist to lock. The other end of the solenoid cable has a DIN connector which plugs in to the uh, connection on the solenoid. It can be installed any direction that it will fit, just 180 degrees. From itself. The coil can also be twisted um, to adapt to the application. Now we will look at how to program and run the batch controller. This is the home screen that will be displayed as soon as you plug the, power, the batch controller into your power supply. There are two modes, a batch and a run mode. Also at the main screen there is a help or a menu option. Above each button below will be an icon that correlates to that function. Not all will say F1 through 4, but the icon above the button will be that function. For example, if we want to go to the help screen, we'll press F3. Now above F2 is the next button, which will take us to the next screen for the help menu. So you work your way through the help menu as needed, going back to the previous screen if needed, or to the main menu at any time. Back at the main menu, we'll look at how to program a batch. So we'll press F1. This gives us the batch mode screen, which is where we will turn on and off the pumps to start or stop a batch. And also pump one, batch one, two, and three, or pump two, batch one, two, and three setup, which is to program the batch. Toggle up and down to select the option we want, hit enter. Pump 1 batch 1 setup, it will ask you for the batch count or the repeat delay. The batch count is how many times the controller will turn the pump on and off to run a set number of cycles, which is on the next screen. The delay is how many seconds it will wait between each batch. So we'll set our batch count at 3 and our repeat delay at 5 seconds. We hit next, and now we set how many cycles are in each batch. So we'll leave it at 10, but you could toggle up and down to change that setting. 
save, and then menu. Now we can go to the batch mode screen. Here you'll see pump one on the left and pump two on the right. Above F1 is the run and stop button for pump one. Um, and F3 for pump two. You can also toggle between all three batch options using F2 for pump one or F4 for pump two, and it will update the program above and show display the active batch. So that's back to batch one. We will hit run, and that will supply power to the solenoid, opening the air supply to your pump. As the pump runs, the cycle count will update live on the screen. And once it gets to zero, it will shut off and now delay five seconds. Now the solenoid will open again and repeat. It will do this to the set number we have in the count field. And you can see you're in a batch because the display is still set to the run side. When we complete our batch, it will toggle to the stop. So you know that batch is complete. You can start and stop a batch at any time. Um, you can start both pumps at the same time and run different batches. So that's the batch mode. If we go back to the main menu, we can look at the run mode. We hit run and it gives us pump one or pump two. I'll select pump one. And here you can see it says pump one. Um, you could also toggle to pump two. It'll update that and show you a different color on the screen. So we go back to pump one. We can hit run and that'll open the solenoid and the pump will get, begin to run and the cycle will begin to count. We could stop at any time and reset at any time. The cycle field will constantly count even from the batch mode, so at the end of the day you can reference how many total cycles you had on the pump. Um, you can run pump one, toggle to pump two, and turn that on as well.